<laughs> that'll, right that'll this, never happen. Thanks, May 28, 2015 Planning Board uh, in session. We have an agenda for this uh, this evening's meeting. Do we have a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 7.30. We have a continued public hearing for 46 Watch Hill Drive. And I understand that the Applicant has requested a continuance. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a motion? Move to continue the public hearing. Or is this something you want me to read? Well, get away. Okay. I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the public hearing um, for the site plan administrative review for the Inley School Classroom Edition at 46. Watch Hill Drive until June 11th, 2015 at 9 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We continue. Okay. Could you just repeat the time of it? It's at 9 o'clock. Thank you. I'll send you a formal continuance after it's filed. Okay. Um, Thank you. We've got five good. minutes. Do we need to wait? For 740? It's just a public meeting. It's not a public hearing. Okay. Okay. So we have then the site plan administrative review for 5 to 7 Otis Place or 105 Front Street. Uh, somebody here for that? No. Come on up. Grab a seat. Introduce yourself. I'm Greg Pocoros. Gentlemen. Thank you, Doc. Okay. Thank you. All right. The floor is yours. Tell us what you would like to do. Um, we were in the process of opening a restaurant at um, 105 Front Street. I've been dealing with Mr. Vogel and I actually just met um, Ms. Hardbottle last week. Uh, we've been approved by the Board of Selectmen, the Health Department, the Fire Department, and we I didn't know anything about this until a couple of days ago. We had been planning on opening today. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that there was a lot of work done there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think uh, Laura should should pitch in. The only reason for this is a change of use from an office type operation. I believe it was a financial office, right? To food service operation. I think it was a it was a retail. Um, they rented uh, wedding furniture. Yeah, and oh, okay. Planners. I'm yeah, I'm right. next I'm next door then. I beg <laughs> yeah. your pardon. Uh, at any rate, a change of use and. Um, so why don't you sort of Laura? fill us in on that, Laura? Sure. Um, we got some dimensions of the space from the Board of Health. It looks like it's approximately 900 square feet. And based on that, they would, if you know, for the retail use, they would have to have five parking spaces. They're having, I believe, six seats inside. And then there are the two benches outside. Are those part of, those no. are just like street furniture that were the, there? Correct. There's, there's two, they're, they're not on our property. That's next door, uh, the outside benches. The thing that's, the window seats are cut out in our place. So on that's the on the inside. So there's a total of, there's three tables with, two, with actually five chairs, and then there's seating for three or four people, call three people, around the window booths. Um, it's mainly takeout. It's there's no waitress service, no liquor service. Um, it's more of a takeout menu, mm -hmm. so it's more on a retail. I, I can't see us increasing the parking because of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. See, uh, so I'm, I guess I'm a little confused. You said there were five seats per table. Is well, this the, 15 no, seats or 20? Right now, there's no, there's five seats in there. They, were, they misshipped a seat. There's supposed to be six. There's three little tables, two seaters. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I didn't get that. So it's really, we're talking about six and six. Six, six is 12. 12. 12. Okay. 
and um, what kind of? It's all Middle Eastern, Mediterranean. Um, there's cooking food, though? Very little. There's We have a stove, but yeah. it's an induction cooktop. There's no grill, no griddle, no mess, no fat or whatever, and it's all uh, hummus, baba ganoush, tabbouleh, that type of stuff. Um, kale salad and parfaits. Um. So anyhow, it doesn't look like there's there's actually an increase in the parking because if you had you know the 900 square feet before with the retail, that would have taken five parking spaces, mm -hmm. and that would entitle them to 20 seats, and it sounds like they have less than that. So I didn't see any issue. I don't really have the, the room for the for 20 mm -hmm. seats in the yeah in the space. Yeah, I mean those are just the standards in the zoning bylaw. They yeah. don't always completely. Um, agree with the number of parking spaces you really actually need but that's what we have to go by um, and the Board of Health um, did a pretty thorough review they uh, weren't able to open Memorial Day w when they had wanted to because they had to go back and do some more plumbing and um, and some more work um, um, I think they have a very nice sign it's white with blue trim and it's mm -hmm. one of the blade signs it's got kind of a black um, ornamental sort of um, um, sign holder to it mm -hmm. so yeah I thought it was there very thought attractive, it was very yeah. attractive. Thanks. yeah did a great job um, so I didn't see any any other issues they agreed that they're gonna be open from 11 to 7 um, so hopefully you know those hours will work and mm -hmm. there will be people there um, you know how are you handling uh, trash there's a dumpster that's in the back that the, we pay a portion to the landlord for it. Okay. And does he it actually doubled the size. It was it was a two-yarder, and now there's a four-yarder in there. Does that get emptied out every day, or I mean, how's that how's that handled? It'll be it'll be emptied. Waste. The landlord doesn't want any issue with his tenants, so the landlord takes care of the trash, and it'll be emptied. If it has to be twice a week, it'll be twice a week. We actually had in the conditions for daily, um, you know, where there's food. Um, yeah, we don't want it sitting around, right? Yeah. I got to be honest, they, they, there'd be a bag of trash a day, it, it, the type of stuff going out there, and to make the, and they can pay for a pickup every day, that would, that'd be very expensive. How does a Lucky Finn handle their trash lower you know I don't know I, we, I think it's an as needed we permitted that too right yeah and that's got about the same seems like quantity and character of you know I don't think I mean, they can go and, uh, and no, but take it's a look. Food. yeah no and I happened to be there one morning and they they you know the, the trash truck was parked on the street the guy went down the, the side where you go to the, the boat pier and I don't know whether it was locked he had to unlock it but he opened it and he took two call it standard trash barrels out and dump them in the thing and, you know he wasn't they didn't appear to be too heavy he wasn't hauling them you know like a lot of work but mm -hmm. you know um, I just wonder how often that's that happens yeah I mean I'd only seen it once so it's, it was about this um, Karen just told me this condition actually came right from the approval on the lucky fin so this oh, was really? the same thing that we have for the lucky fin oh we're talking about that before. okay We, I don't think we've, had, well, we could check the yogurt place um, and see. Yeah, what that would be another there. another sort of car. I, I know for a fact that they're not picked, the yogurt place has their own dumpster and they don't get picked up on a daily on a daily basis. I All I can say is I'd appreciate going on an as-needed basis and I'd be called in front of the board if there was a problem, but I don't want uh, any problems with trash. Do you want to do twice a week and then have them come back, you know, and see how it's working, or how? What do you? Oh, great. Yeah, we I'm should put a standard in there, and I would, I would say that that we would want somebody to come back if there's a problem, right? Yeah, I would. If we I have would. a problem, and we need them to come back and resolve it. Yeah, I could do it twice a week and or more if needed. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, the other alternative <laughs> is to hold it in cold storage. You know, hold your hold your food waste in cold storage for the uh, 
which is probably not much. I mean, it's a small bag, right? But I can't put that in the cooler with the food. No, it would have to be a separate cooler. So I, that's another piece of equipment you don't need. I'm just mm. babbling, but just thinking. I don't have a problem with twice a week, and unless and unless there's a problem, I'm. We really need to support our businesses. I agree and with this, that. And this is a new business, and we should be as amenable as possible to ensure that he can go forward and do what he needs to do. I think twice a week is is more than sufficient. And if there comes, if there's a problem and someone complains, then I think we could deal with it at that time. Yeah, we'll hear about it for sure. Right. Well, if we've the only issue is if we establish that standard of once a day for everybody else, then we should alter that standard. Well, if, we, if we're not consistent, then I'm fine with doing it for twice a week. But I would also say if there's a problem, then we have to address it. I would think that right. some place like Reba's would have to be once a day because, or some place like the Mill Wharf, yes. But these small little cubby holes, if you will, for lack of a better description, don't generate enough to do it yeah, like the yogurt place, like the juice yeah, right. juice, juice bar. Right. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not as worried about you know the total volume as as well, what the impact of leaving it yeah. fermenting for three days in the hot sun is. Right. But I mean, that's a really what people a cover are with it. about. And you right. know, if if the rodents start attacking, um, sure yeah, we can I'd come back and figure. about that too. Right. <laughs> we can we can visit it again, but I don't think that I really feel that having it every single day is onerous. I really do. I, I think it's an unfair burden. It'd be extremely expensive. Should we say something like um, trash shall be handled in covered sealed containers and must be emptied at least twice a week, if um, or uh, as needed, or, or as needed, and um, let it keep it simple. Well, I'd say no less than twice a week. If you need to do it more, you need to do it more. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Have you had a restaurant before? What? I'm sorry? Have you had a restaurant report before? I've had a restaurant before, a lot, actually about 20 years ago, but I've been in the food business my whole life. So I'm familiar with operations. Good. Um, so the trash that people generate as a result of buying stuff there where does that go is it if just it's take it mainly to go it's mainly so yeah. they'd be taking it to their house or their office or wherever okay. probably people going to be sitting you know around uh, mm -hmm. the the tables and chairs overlooking the harbor or, or something like that but they're I'm sorry people inside will just they'll have a trash receptacle there's them. a trash receptacle there now but but most of the stuff, like I said, will be going to people's houses or offices. It's probably going to go in the, the town uh, trash barrels in Situate Harbor, which is what they're there for, yeah. really. Right. Would it make a difference if it's just vegetables and... <clears throat> no. No. Uh, my, Peter was just I mean, asking. Uh, just, it, it's, it's just going to mostly be vegetables and fruit, and it's just like... I'd almost say it's going to be more of a quantity, but it's just like at the house. We have weekly trash pickup. So there is a, there is a larger amount, but at the same time, it goes into the dumpster. And I mean, there are tenants there that do throw trash out. So if there's a problem with once a week, they definitely tell the landlord and then we can change it. I mean, currently it is once a week. For you the know pickup. who else is using that dumpster? I think just the four tenants. Okay. That just, just, just the, yep. just the, res the, the residential units. And that's why we're doubling the size. And that's the reason that we paid to double the size of the um, dumpster. Okay. Um, anything else? Anything else change? Is there is there new air conditioning or anything like that that's going in here? No. It's all existing systems. Yes. We had we and did no electrical, new ventilation. electrical and plumbing, and that was all Inside. permitted. Right. There was no, no construction to the building. Okay. Is there going to be a PSP with this? No. Okay. I have no questions. I'm all set. All set. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. We have a. 
Uh, move that the planning board finds that the attached plan by the applicant Gregory Bukharis meets the requirements of the Town of Situate Zoning Bylaw Section 770.6 Site Plan Review Standards of Review to a degree consistent with the reasonable use of the site for the purpose permitted by the regulations of the district in which the land is located and approve the site plan with the following conditions. One, approval is contingent upon all local approvals being being obtained by the town of Situate, including but not limited to the Board of Health, Fire Department, and Inspectional Service, Services Department. Indoor seating is limited to six seats. Outdoor seating is limited to two benches, which can seat four people each. Well, I think maybe we no, want to no take a about the benches. No All right, Sorry there's no that. outdoor seating. Yeah. Just forget the, forget yeah. number two yeah. and trash <laughs> shall be handled well, well you want to limit i think you do want to limit the indoor seating In, what do you have 12, 12 seats all right okay indoor seating is limited to 12 seats maybe you could just end there number three trash shall be handled in covered seal containers and must be emptied at least twice a, must be emptied twice a week can we Try the one th the, to continue what we're doing now. Well, you're not operating now. I'm just saying that it's the once a week pickup. Can we start with that? If there's any issue, we'll handle it before you ever hear about it. I can guarantee that. The landlord, <coughs> the landlord doesn't want an issue with his tenants. How about so. it must be emptied as needed That's and keep it as broad as possible? I still think we have to put a number in there. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't, even if you didn't create enough volume to empty it once a week, I'd want it emptied once a week. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so then at least once a week. Okay. Yeah. Or as needed. As needed at a, at a minimum of once a week. Okay. Is that all right? No, that sounds good. I think the, the tenants, the, the people that live there, are going to keep pretty close tabs if there's a okay. problem, if everything's rolling smoothly. I guess I would add to that then if there is a problem we would like to know that that there sure. is a problem so we'll say something like um, you know and the the applicant will keep the planning board informed of any problems that develop right okay so that was number three was the trash and number four um, the applicant will keep the planning board informed <coughs> with um, the trash Changes situation is that it Okay. And second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you're ready to go tomorrow? Good luck. Oh, I'm yeah. going to do Saturday. <laughs> All right. Good luck. Thank you. Good it's supposed, good luck. To, supposed to be a beautiful day. Four, five, and six. Okay. okay. Make some trash. Baba <laughs> Ganoush. <laughs> if they have enough people in the center. It's good. Six or Mm. Could use a little diversity. Mm. Probably the neighbors yeah. and the people in the uh, How is it though? Like, like, I understand. I've heard about this. I, I, I know, know that, but it's basically a business district. Yeah. I, I know, think they I'm didn't saying, know, know, and I didn't honestly know, know either that balance. it was the subject of a special permit. Oh. Or that it needed this review by this. I mean, I saw the work being done and just figured the building department and everything was. Right. If it had been one office or one. Use going to a similar use, it would not have required. Yeah, though that I'm aware of. You know, I just remember doing the Lucky Finn, and it was a change of use, so we had yep. to go through, yeah. through the process. It's a good point. Yeah, how do they get this far without the Lucky Finn? Right there. Uh, I just put it over there. Right. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're done there. Uh, eight o'clock. It's not quite eight o'clock yet. Do we have people for Benjamin Studley Farm here? They're outside. They're outside. Let's we'll give them give them a few minutes, and we can do accounting and everything else. Works Ready for me. Taken care of. Uh, you get minutes. Minutes. Minutes are good. Okay, I can't vote on these, so. You can. I can? Yep. All sure. Right. <laughs> hey, you never know. You're, you're part if it of comes a choice between me reading them or you voting on them, then uh, we're not gonna <laughs> you, you're empowered. Thank you, Dollar. <laughs> uh, minute, move the minutes of May 14th, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay. We it? have a whole batch of bills. Like okay. a good six, seven minutes worth of bills. Oh. We could well, do let's, you, let's, you got something? No, I just, I, I'm not, not sure everybody was here for the for this eight o'clock thing, so. Yeah, let's, so let's do the bills. Yeah. Let's pay the bills. Yeah, let's just mm. pay the bills. It won't take long. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fast reader. Read them two at a time. Yeah. <laughs> two at a time. Okay, let's see. Move to pay Armory Engineers. Um, do uh, right down there. Okay, six hundred fifty-six dollars and twenty-five cents. Second. Do you want, you might want to do them all at once. Read them all. Read them all yeah. uh, okay. Move to pay Armory Engineer two hundred sixty-eight dollars and forty cents. Move to pay Ralph Kroll two hundred ten dollars. Move um, W. B. Mason twenty-eight sixty-six. Move. Um, JNR Graphics, forty-seven dollars. Move Dobson and Fink Flinkler, Inc., fifteen hundred. Move Massachusetts Housing Partnership, seventy-five dollars. Image Resolutions, four eleven seventy-five. Move Merrill Corporation, three thousand six hundred forty dollars. What? They were. That was for um, engineering the school. Inley school. Yeah. Okay. What and, was the other one? And the other big one was for. Fifteen hundred was for technical services. Preparation of illustrations for zoning matters. Uh -huh. That was that was for the accessory dwellings. Okay. Okay. Right. We have a second. Yes. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We all have to sign this. Oh, I'm just three people. Um, okay. 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 I guess we're close enough to uh, 8 o'clock to uh, move to a project update on the Benjamin Studley Farm, 214 Clap Road. Who's here? Is there anybody here representing? Joe Ian Tosco from Firm Properties. Okay. Maybe we should let Laura give us an overview. Evelyn was from McKenzie Engineering. All right. You have do you have the backdrop on this one? The the backdrop. Um, the backdrop <laughs> is that we got a number of um, well, first of all, um, various department heads, um, myself. Karen um, went out to the site and observed that the detention basins were very full. The one in the front was very full, and then there's a uh, temporary uh, sediment basin within the site, which was also very full. Um, there were also some issues that were brought up. Uh, there was a letter kind of on Karen's chair one day from um, Orenberger and Associates concerning a um, no dispute is the right word, but just a uh, difference of opinion about the size and the location of the sediment basins on the south side of Clap Road. So there were these different issues. Um, some other issues that were brought up uh, by the neighborhood were that there were uh, very intense lights in the subdivision, and those, I've been told, have been changed, and the lights that are there now are shielded. They may have some type of bulb that maybe could be switched out for something else to make them less intense, but you know, there's at least been an attempt to address that and you know to do what was required by the by the um, subdivision approval. Uh, the other thing that has happened is that the the um, trees that were and shrubs that were planted on the detention basin have died because um, it looks like they got too much water or you know they had some other issues with the the snow in the winter that just um, was too much for a lot of different things so those are probably gonna have to be replaced but I think in particular with the detention basins um, because the sizing is is fairly tricky and there were some 
people that went out and, and measured the depth um, of the basins and they came out with one number um, which you know I didn't go out there with them I don't know exactly where they measured but we did have Pat Brennan go out there evaluate what was going on with the detention basins and um, determine what the, the depth was at the maximum and he's here to actually give a report to you all he finished up a report today which um, we sent out um, at some point today um, but I thought it would be good to have him actually here and then if there are some major questions about how the measurements were done maybe Pat can address some of those and the applicants are here also and then the um, um, engineer and attorney representing the abutter on the south side are here also so okay sounds like a good entree for Pat then <laughs> As Laura had mentioned, uh, just identify yourself. Yeah, Pat Brennan with Amory Engineers. Thank you. I'm the board's consultant engineer on this construction portion of this project. As Laura had mentioned, um, there were some complaints about water standing in that front basin on the left hand side of the road as you go in. Um, when I looked at the plans, that basin, excuse me, was designed as a wet basin. Basically, it's, it was supposed to be a stormwater pocket wetland, is what they call it. Um, when you look at the plans, seasonal high groundwater is two feet four inches above the design bottom of the basin. So during what times of year when the seasonal high groundwater can be expected that you're going to have a little over two feet of water in there. Also, the, the lowest outlet on the outlet con control structure is two and a half feet above the bottom of the basin. You know, another another uh, couple of inches above seasonal high groundwater. So what I observed when I went out there is that the staining on the outlet control structure and the dead vegetation, though you can see the water line around the entire basin, um, was right at pretty much the invert of that lowest outlet. Um, when I was out there, when I went out there, um, the contractor, a couple of his guys were just removing a pump. They had been pumping the water out of it to lower it. Um, I think Al Loomis from McKenzie Engineering or the, the uh, developer can explain why they were lowering it. Um, but when I went out there, what I saw was the water at the low point that they had pumped it down to was about two to two and a half feet below that lowest invert. I took a survey rod, stuck it out in the middle of the, the micro pool. There's a little pool right in front of the outlet control structure. That's a micro pool. That's supposed to be a little bit deeper than some of the rest of the mm -hmm. area. Um, and I measured about eight inches of water in there. You know, I moved the rod around. It's muddy, so, you know, obviously I didn't push it down. I just laid it on the bottom. Um, so I measured about eight inches of water. So based on those <coughs> um, measurements, um, I was estimating that the depth of water in that basin for an extended period of time was between roughly 2.7 and 3.2 feet deep at, at its deepest point. Um, I received a, I asked McKenzie Engineering for an as-built plan of that basin so I could see what the, how the as-built contours um, lined up with the, with the design plan and they actually lined up pretty well. The, um, the lowest, the lowest contour on the as-built plan and, and actually I, I know Al's got one there but I also did this when they sent me that plan and I can Kind of a crude drawing, but hold it up. What do you have? This is the actual drawing. Um, it's probably easier if you stay. I, I don't mean for you to stand there, but easier just because we'll be able to see it a little better this way. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So this is the design drawing. Yep. This is the asphalt. Okay. The contours when you compare the two, they line up pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the outlet structure, and there's a spot elevation right there of 104.61. So that's the low point there. There's another micro pool here, which is at 105.18. Another micro pool here, which is at 105.03. So those are the low points. And then they had like 106.2 kind of along the, the trail as it goes the in. The and that channel, really yeah. does line up yeah. pretty well with the. So the micro pool on the design drawing was 105. 
one hundred five five. The yeah. contour. They didn't they didn't show any spot grades in the center of them. Yeah. But the, the contour around the bottom was one hundred five five. Okay. Um, the micro pool down here by the outer structure was right at one hundred five. Mm -hmm. And again, if it's a flat bottom, then it should be one hundred five. Mm -hmm. uh, this has a little bit of a dip in the middle, which I measured. Which you know, according to the Osbro plan, what I measured, it's about five inches lower. <coughs> Okay. So that's that's what I found when I went out there, and like I said, you know, when I I went out there last Tuesday and took my measurements, and I got the as-built plan from Mackenzie last night. I looked at it this morning, and um, the the measurements that I measured really lined up pretty well with what they have on their as-built plan. So your your conclusion is they they've essentially built it as it's designed. Yeah, it's pretty close. Within tolerances. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Question to Pat. Sorry. I just. I'm all set. If you've got a question, I'm sorry. If, go in order if we, no, if we wish fine. to. For so a wet basin, what, what level of water would you expect to stay in there? Um, well, to be honest with you, I, I took some. I, and yeah, I brought. They brought it down below the invert, right? Yeah, it? it's down below. The, it's two and a half feet. Well, a little over two and a half feet below the invert is the bottom of that basin. But remember, the seasonal high groundwater that they observed in test holes prior to construction was two feet four inches above the bottom design bottom of that basin too. So yeah. that high groundwater is going to have two and a half feet. Yeah, and, and I brought some photos from uh, during construction. This was back August 21st of last year, and I'll I'll bring this up to the board. Um, I think I have an earlier one. No, that's. This is when they first excavated the basin. These photos. And if you look, there was water in August. We had a real dry August, mm -hmm. July, August, and September. Yeah, very. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's during the dry season. There was water in that basin. My question was: In other pro projects you're involved in, have you observed higher than normal groundwater this spring? I would expect that to be um, the case. I haven't really been out to too many sites yet this spring. Everything is kind of slow after this winter, but uh, yeah. I right now, the last time I checked the USGS groundwater site, I think they were in the normal range. Is that right? right now. Even after and all they're, pro and they're probably normal. they're probably below normal right now. Yeah. Okay. And what was the reason for the pumping? Um, I, I'm not sure the exact reason. Well, well we can wait. Excuse me. Okay, uh, we can wait till the. Okay. You can address that when they talk to yeah. So, I, and this all sounds good, I guess. Uh, is there a conclusion? Is there anything that needs to be done here in your opinion? Well, what needs to be done is they need to get the vegetation established in there. Obviously, because of the, basically, when they, once they built it, it filled right up, and it really didn't drain because it can't with the high groundwater. Um, basically, they need to get that planted, get some vegetation established in there. And um, once the vegetation is established, yeah, seasonal high groundwater will still be in there, but you're going to get a lot of uptake in that vegetation for that water. So you, at times, during dry times, there shouldn't be very, should be very little water in there with, with established vegetation. But it's going to be difficult to get the vegetation to establish because of that groundwater. Yeah, is it going to die off every time you hit seasonal high groundwater? Unless they stay right on top of it and try to, I mean, maybe plant during the dry, portion of the year this year and, and try to keep it pumped down um, but is there a different planting mix or you know species mix that would work better <coughs> um, I'd have to look into that um, I'm not I'm not a plant expert yeah no I understand <laughs> but I'm some somebody who knows might might have a yeah an idea about that uh, there's no inf there's no uh, percolation expected here because you're above groundwater it's coming up yeah right so no, nothing gets sucked off into the soil right uh, and so the soils surrounding these basins, it's not engineered soil like, like it would be in a, in a rain garden. No, no. They, they dug down to basically probably six inches below the proposed grade and then put loam on it. And that's, that's all that's there. It's just okay. loam. And how, how long does sort of seasonal high groundwater sort of... Um, how long will it be there for a month or two? Or will it be there well, for based on... Or? Those photos from last August, I, I think there's probably going to be water in there almost all, all the year time. round. Yeah. 
green problem. Is is a uh, just in general, not specific to this project, but is a wet basin design that's going to contain water pretty much all year round. Um, a fairly standard engineering response to you know the issues that are being addressed here. When when you're designing them, um, well, when you design them as a wetland, they have to be somewhat wet year round. Sure. Th this is a little extreme um, with that depth of water. Steve? Yes. Uh, should that detention basin be fenced? Because three feet of water or two and a half feet of water is what I would consider to be sort of a hazardous nuisance if there are small children in the development. Um, as much as we have helicopter parents, there's always one that manages to get away. Um, I mean, that's something to think about. Also, too, will any provisions be made or should any provisions be made to treat these basins so that mosquitoes don't come and reside? Um, I'll, I'll answer your first question. Well, I'll try to answer your first question first about the fencing. Um, up to about 15 years ago, detention basins were almost always fenced. Um, there, there's, there's some thought that the fence keeps children out, but there's other thoughts that children see a fence, they get curious, they jump over it, and then they can't get back out. So that's why a lot of towns went away from requiring fences around basins. So it's really, it, it's, it's, it's got its pros and cons for a fence. Um, you know, maybe a temporary fence until things get established, that, that might be an option. Um, but, and then in terms of mosquitoes, I'd have to check into that too. Um, I'm not really sure. I, I think there's uh, there's like a, it's the BTI, it's the Bacillus uh, thuringiensis or something like that. There's like a, a tablet they can put in that's organic. It's like a biological um, factor right. for killing mm -hmm. mosquitoes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, man. Um. Well, I guess what I'd like to do is, do uh, you have a question that yeah, pertains just, to... Yes, I was wondering about the basins up back, if those were looked at as well, because they're supposed to drain within 72 hours and have water um, until they were pumped out for over three weeks a month. Was that something you looked at, Mr. Brennan? I didn't look at it as part of this, but I'm aware of that situation, and I know that the developer and his engineers are looking into that issue at this okay. time. Well, maybe we could ask the developer and his engineers to fill us in on, on what you've done. Can I just so say one thing before we go down any further of a road? I feel like everything's being talked about now. I, I, I need to Could talk you about identify them. yourself? I'm sorry, please. Michael Johnson, 218 Clap Road. Okay. I'm the direct of water right next to the pocket wetland. Uh-huh. Can I submit something to you? This is a chronological uh, photo. Of the, um, they're all dated with uh, starting at the beginning of the design drawings, and then that's April 29th. And then you'll see how it goes. But I, I have a lot, well, I can make it quick, but well, I, I would like to actually take the floor if possible. Yeah, we'll give you an opportunity. Uh, just uh, what I'd like to do is just see if we can get the developer to tell us, you know, what they've, what they've identified or if they have any comments uh, to Mr. Brennan's sure. review here. Um, as I said before, I'm Joe Fiantoska from Fern Properties. Um, just to, to give you a little bit of history on this, <clears throat> the, the basin wet design was part of a requirement um, that was agreed to with the Town of Situate Conservation Commission back in 2013. And part of the, the agreement read that the design of an enhanced detention basin to provide wetland functions within the new detention basin to include a wet bottom area, marshy area, and circuitous water flow to direct the stormwater flows through a stream bank and vegetation for stormwater cleaning and wetland uh, hab habitat enhancements. And this is supposed to be done in accordance with DEP regulations. So the, the idea was to construct a wet basin in the front of the project, and that's the directive that McKenzie Engineering had to build or to design the basin. Um, from that point, it went through peer review with conservation as well as with <coughs> the um, planning board before it was approved. <coughs> We've gone ahead and built the basin 
Um, it hasn't happened overnight. It's been through the course of last summer and there's been some adjustments that have been made to it this spring. And the, the work that's been done out there, we have McKenzie Engineering going out and doing an as-built plan to make sure that the, what's been built out there is in conformance with the design plan. And from the as-built plan that he has, the majority of the, the ponding area or the circuitous flow that runs through that is at elevation 106.2, which is, here's the as-built plan right here. Mm -hmm. And the outlet elevations, the or, there's a two and a half inch hole in the outlet structures that drain that pond is at elevation 107.5. Correct? No, yeah. Okay, so the difference is for the majority of the pond, the, the amount of water that should be in there should be 18 inches. Part of the design, and this is what was explained to me, because at initially when we had to design this and I had to build it, the questions that I had was, do we want this water here? Is there going to be an issue with mosquitoes or anything else? And this is the way it was explained to me, and this is what was designed. The, there are wetland pools that are in three locations from, in, from the outlet, from the subdivision, a midpoint, and at the discharge point that's approximately a foot lower. That, it, from what was explained to me, is very critical that it needs, to, it needs to have water all year long. The balance of the pond at a certain point during the course of the year, the, elo, the 106 elevation will dry out. And I believe Mr. Brennan from Amory has pictures of that last year because the basin was dry through the course of the summer until we hit approximately October and had a very wet fall and through the winter. Um, the as-built plans, they've, the, the construction company has been out there and has done some additional grading to bring it into conformance. They've been out there the last couple of weeks and once their work was done, I believe about a week ago, McKenzie Engineering was out and did an as-built plan and shot the topos as well as the, the invert elevations that go into the pond as well as leave. And what we've constructed here, um, as far as the, the, the engineering standpoint, matches up with what was proposed in the plan. What's remaining to be done is the wetland plants that need to go in the riverbed or stream area at the bottom of it. We had the plantings on site last year when this was going to be installed and then unfortunately once the rains came, the basin filled and it wasn't prudent to put the, the plantings in the bottom of the basin because if they would be covered with water, they wouldn't end up taking. From what the wetland planting people have told me is that the, the bottom of that basin needs to be low enough in order for the leaves to, to remain <laughs> above the water and that's how they will thrive. And eventually they'll start to grow approximately a couple of feet higher, maybe higher, and at that point the bottoms of the plants can remain in the water but the leaves have to remain in the sunshine in order for them to thrive. So what we're waiting to do right now is once that basin's at a low enough point we'll go in and, and plant the bottom of the basin and whatever plants haven't taken will end up either replacing them or nursing them back. Okay, so the, the regrading has essentially, you didn't even plant the, the original wetlands then? Um, no, we've planted the perimeter plantings in here, but at the yeah. very base, <clears throat> the very base has, the base, excuse me, why don't you hold this over here now? <coughs> Kill <somebody. laughs> yeah. my, my tripod. <coughs> the water gets discharged from the subdivision, here's the outlet. Here's one of the ponds that's supposed to remain wet all the time. That's, a, that's an elevation 105. There's a channel that's supposed to meander all the way through at approximately 106.5. That meanders all the way through to one uh, ponding or pocket area at 105.5 and then the second pocket area that's at about 105 before it goes into this control structure at 107, 107.5. <coughs> The perimeter plantings were put in, but the plantings that go along this, this route need to, go, need to be planted. We have them on site. We're probably going to have to replace some of them that didn't, that didn't hold up over the winter time. Once this is dry enough, we'll be able to plant these along the bottom. And there's some additional seeding with the regrading. These areas <coughs> that you see, that they look like small peninsulas. The, the issue that we had was they were too low. 
And so we had to bring the grade up probably four or five inches, and that's what they've done over the last couple of weeks. The reason why they needed to get a pump in there, and we pumped the water to the temporary pond that's at, the, there was a sediment pond that was built strictly for construction. And any of the, any of the sediment water, any of the, the construction drain water, storm water was supposed to collect in the sediment pond. And so we have a sediment pond that's at the top of the hill. It's been seeded. We took the water from this pond in order to be able to get some of this rating done that's, that was because the pond was even with the 107.5 outlet elevation. We wanted to drop it below that. So we ended up putting a pump in here and we pumped it 500 feet up the street to the temporary pond in order to get it low enough so we could end up fixing these, adding additional material and reshaping these contours. I expect, if last summer was the indication, I expect that the water level to recede down to that 106, 1065, so we're able to do these plantings. Okay. Um, let me ask the board first if they have any questions. And yeah. then we'll get to then we'll get to okay, public so comment. What about the detention basin on the other side? That has a lot of water in it too, or at least it did the last time I drove down there. The one to you the right. The sediment basins. On it, oh, oh, the, uh, the, yeah, the the one, one on, on the, the other, other side. side of the, road. the one that's on that illustration on the right side. Yeah, that's a, that's a constructed wetland. That's the replication area yeah. for the. And that's the, um, and that's supposed to have water in it all the time. Not all the time, no. No, there'll be there'll be some in there after rainfall or whatever, but it's temporary in nature. Because so it's above the groundwater level. It's, it's ground probably water. about at the groundwater. It's uh, elevation 108, 107. Yeah, that would be just above. That was a wetland area before any construction. There was a little uh, corner of the site there that was uh, right. BBW. And uh, we replicated any disturbance in that area, so that's why that was disturbed at all. It was to replicate okay. those areas and enhance it. There are plantings in there. And <coughs> Excuse me. The reason why that was put into place, there, was, there are two culverts that went across the street, mm -hmm. and that's another issue that I wasn't expecting to have to deal with the, all these tonight, but I'd be happy to address them. But there's there's a culvert that was replaced. And what ends up happening is all the water from the uphill portion of not just this site, but the abutting areas flow down this way. They went into a, a corrugated steel pipe that was here at one point in time, and the pipe ended up being halfway filled. So <clears throat> the Conservation Commission, along with the DPW, required this culvert to be, to be replaced. Um, to bring this in conformance with the Stormwater, um, Stormwater Act, it requires sediment bases on the outside of the outfall to collect any, any, any uh, impurities or, or any type of erosion that may go in there. And in order to put the sediment traps on the outfall pipes, we had to go into this whole side of the up across the street, which is, is either on the snow property or on the county layout. There's some dispute to that. Um, is all wetland area. So in order to get those the, the aprons put in, we had to replicate that area on this side of the road. The drainage on the subdivision, this is not part of the drainage system. This is strictly for wetland replication for the for the outlet aprons on these two uh, on the other side of the road. And these are dry at this point. I don't I haven't seen standing water unless you know once the water starts flowing from the uphill. As a matter of fact, we had so much erosion that we went back in and put a, a stone apron to collect some of this water that's running down into it. And what is the elevation at the top of this? That's 105? Mm. Of the, the one on the, the left. <coughs> it goes from 10. The, the low point's 105.03. 105. Yeah, it's 107 and a half. The low point within the, the three micro pools that Joe spoke of is about 105. The top of berm for the, the entire basin, you'll see the spot grades around the basin 111, 111.5. It's generally 111 plus. But the outfall is 107. The outfall is 107.5. Which is higher than the one at the top. I mean, water flows downhill. So I must be missing something that I <coughs> just don't understand. The, 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 the design, excuse me, the design of the basin was to keep this as a wet bottom basin. They didn't want the whole basin to, to dry out. 
So the the design requirement, and from what I've been told by the engineers, and we can elaborate on this, is this is textbook DP required design. There's these three micro pools are supposed to have water in the year round. Okay. All right. And then and then at a certain stage there's supposed to be water that that by winding its way through this wet basin and by having the vegetation in it, it's supposed to clean this. Yeah. It. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why there are several uh, vegetated basins within the subdivision in order to that's the low impact development design that we had to make changes in the in the drainage design. You'll see some you'll see the center of the cul-de-sac that has probably a four or five foot depression. You'll see another spot along the edge of the road that has a five foot depression and those are to collect the water and to purify it before it goes into the into the piping system and then out to the to the rear basin number two. Or in this case, before it gets discharged into the to the is it self swamp? The, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that invert pipe coming in, as I read it, is one oh nine point thirty two. Is that is that your your entering is you that your entering up, input up input at the top? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that so you're coming in at one oh nine and leaving at one oh seven basically. Okay, so it is going down. Essentially it's through the bathtub right with an overflow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank the, you. Um, the elements of a pocket wetland are generally uh, micro pools, a low marsh area, and a high marsh area. The micro pool pools, Joe pointed out to you, the three of them, the circuitous <coughs> the serpentine route that the water takes, that would be the low marsh. And then these little fingers of land are the high marsh. They all serve a purpose, the, the low marsh and the high marsh. Um, help establish certain vegetation um, that, that have certain needs in terms of whether they're in the water or out of the water, but within easy reach of the water. Um, so all of that vegetation goes towards the treatment as well as that long route that the water has to take to get out of the basin. Okay. And the reason, the reason for the pumping was to come back up and allow you to, to raise the peninsulas? There Correct. Was, there was some grading work done, um, not only raised the peninsulas, but uh, I believe there were some high points within the, the low match area too that they needed to bring down a little bit to keep it a constant elevation. This 106 needs to be constant all the way through, and there were a few high points that were evident where the water wasn't flowing through, as well as that the, the peninsulas had to be raised up. So in order to do that without waiting until August so we could get something going, we ended up pumping this water uphill into the temporary basin. There wasn't any type of murky or um, dirt laid in the water, um, but we needed to get that to a long enough point where they could get in and reach with an excavator or work by hand <coughs> to make this to, to adjust these grades. That thing. So the next step now is that once this does dry out to the point where we can get people in here, we will plant all the wetland plantings that go right along here. Okay. So in your opinion, the the, the miss, missing element is strictly the vegetation plantings. Robert? Uh, no, not at this time. Bob? No, it's been explained pretty well how it should work, how it how it is now, and I think we just need to deal with the, the situation. Yeah, I, I, I do have a question for you on this. Um, this circuitous route you're talking about looks like it's all at the same elevation, so <clears throat> as soon as the water fills up to that elevation it's not flowing anywhere it's just stagnant right it's not going anywhere it has to reach the the elevation of the out the the little orifice that's up on the public control structure you see at the bottom of the, of the right, but there's there's really not any water flowing until it gets to an out a flow yes but you have flow into the basin in a, in a rainfall event that that's, I mean, that's part of the purpose, actually, to allow settlement of any fine particulates and, and allow uptake of um, undesirable, you know, phosphorus, probably, and nitrogen, things like that, by the plants. So the right, it's not really a flow, though. It's, it's sort of a stagnant pool. I mean, it's being filled, but it's not flowing out, so there's no, it's not like a river flowing. No. It's not that kind of thing. No, no. It's no. just a settlement basin is what it is. And so, how does that? How does the high groundwater level impact this design? 
the fact that we're saying we're, we're two and a half at, at high groundwater we've got two and a half feet of water in there all the way around for for I don't know how long month two uh, how long will the nine months <coughs> yeah well before before 2015 all four so does it does that the fact that it's just full of water all the time impact the ability of this to act as a as sort of a, a wetlands yes you, you actually want to promote um, it it to be in the water table for it to function for it to grow the vegetation that you want it to grow and, and to serve as a I mean it's called a pocket wetlands so um, you do want to promote that I guess I'm distinguishing between yeah there's some residual water in the in the little pools the micro pools versus two and a half feet or two feet of water for months at a time is is the wetland going to thrive there I mean it's not it's not taking water it's it's underwater that's what I'm trying to understand well there's vegetation um, that does thrive and that's why in the in the guidelines in the stormwater management regulations they prescribe the depth of water in a high marsh, in a low marsh, and in a micro pool, it's, um, I think it's six to 18 inches in a uh, low marsh, and then it's 18 to under five feet, I believe it is, for a micro pool. So they prescribe certain depths of water that should be in there. And I think even, I can't speak for the, the, the authors of the SMR, but I think they understand that it's seasonal high groundwater, so it's not always going to be at that elevation. Um, it will vary as the as the year goes on. You'll see it in the spring months and not in the you know the late summer or whatnot. So, okay, so but it's enough to promote the that system vegetation. is designed to handle two feet or so of seasonal high water. It will. It's designed to do that. It yes, will and survive. And maybe, as, maybe closer as to eighteen out inches. Earlier, generally, huh? this is maybe closer to eighteen inches. This is more like 18 inches uh, or a little less because the outlet elevation is 1075 and the, the bottom of that, um, the low marsh, this, the serpentine root there is 1062. So you get about 1.3 feet of water that would potentially be maintained in there in a high groundwater, a seasonal high groundwater situation. If it gets higher than that, then your serpentine doesn't work. It, it well, it, it is allowed out by the orifice yeah. in the in the outlet yeah. control structure at that point, so it would be maintained at that 1075. If that that if that, it, that elevation is the gating value. It, I'm sorry, it's the what? It's the gating value. Yes. Hmm. Sure. Okay. I guess I'm I'm looking at this report that says. The normal depth of water in the basin during seasonal high groundwater would be somewhere between 2.3 and 2.5 and feet. Is that, am I reading that wrong? That's in that micro pool, in the micro pools. Okay. The three low areas. So take eight inches off of that? Uh, no, because the micro pools are roughly a foot lower than okay. the certain time. The plan says it's, it's one of five. The micro pool that's the one point in the micro pool. That's what the plan's drawn as. Okay. All right, I'm just trying to get at the point that if this is our seasonal high groundwater, this system is designed to handle that for, if it goes for three months at that level, it will, it will survive as long as the vegetation has been established. Yes. And, the, and, there and will not just survive, but function. You'll, you'll see um, sedges and things like that that will survive and thrive in a, in, um, a certain amount of water. It can't be six feet deep, but... In, a, in the right amount of water, they'll survive and thrive in those situations. And this is the right amount of water. Yes, that's that's okay. exactly that's as prescribed <laughs> by um, the stormwater management regulations. Okay. This is all spelled out in terms of the amount of low marsh, the amount of high marsh, and the amount of micro pool area and volume you should have, um, which we you try to meet those. You need to come close to them at least, uh, which we did. That's all in the stormwater management report that we prepared. Okay. 
Okay. Go up and down. Okay. Um, anything else? Because I would like to hear from the public as well. Sure. So, um, why don't we let you continue? <coughs> Can I take a seat? Sure. Come on up. Johnston, uh, 218 Clap Road. Lived in Sitchin for 30 some years. Two months I had a lot of time during spent college. Besides that, I was here. Um, basically, the measurements they're talking about, the 105, I understand that concept. I understand the 107.5 point, gate level. The issue that we're having. If you flip through that book, you'll have it noted. I think it's like the fourth page. It's a large picture that shows the pump basin. Pat, this one. Um, well, if you guys could ask Pat, if he if he measured the center of the pool, the depth. When I was up there last Tuesday, yes. How did you get 18 feet out? I had a stadium rod. I stuck it out there, and based on the angle I was at, and the I bet it came up to it, buddy. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're going to have to make... Oh, somebody's going to have to go out there and measure it again. I, I did yeah. measure it myself. It was archaic. I'm not going to say it was on, on 100%. But the measurement I came up with, the center of the pool was 33 inches deep today. And the depth from the top of the hole, which is 107.5, down to the top of the water level now, is 15-inch difference. Uh, hence... The only reason that it actually was working correct, the water was up to the gateway. That's how it was designed. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that it wasn't draining across the street. I, I, I saw it all the time. It was just a slow drip through that really, really tiny hole. But it was only you know an inch above it. It was working. They pumped it out all the way down, up, out back, and that brown water has been coming up. I understand the concept of pocket wetland. It's supposed to filter the water. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it was doing, actually. What it was doing at four feet deep. Uh, not to mention, it's not just four feet. It's, I don't know what you call it, silt. But if you step near it, you go down like quicksand. You know, it's like, I went down in the middle of my calf. You know, a young kid, I don't know what would happen. Uh, I wasn't against this project. You could ask these guys. Uh, they told me, they never, they never, they never, told me anything untruthful. They might have avoided some specifics. But um, basically, that is not functioning correctly. Uh, on the flip side, you know, actually, here's the, this is an email I wrote, you know, basically laying out. It's not just the heights on the gateway. They all start contradicting each other, the heights do. Even the you know the, the top elevation of the grade of the ground versus the elevation of the grade on the concrete, I don't know what you call it, the concrete gating system. You change one, up the other one will be wrong. You fix both, another one will be wrong. The system is not installed the way it was either I guess the way it was approved, the way the approved drawings were, were planned. Um, you know, you have all these plantings in there, and you know, best case scenario, there's a thousand plantings, and to me, it makes sense that that water actually would stay at two and a half. So when the rainwater comes from the back, it immediately filters the old water across the street. I don't like the idea that it's actually just sitting there. I think that's why they dug two feet down below groundwater. If you look through the drawings, they're two feet below. Um, but I understand the concept. It's not that I don't understand what they're trying to do, it's that it wasn't installed correctly. It just wasn't. With all the pictures and photos and the emails I sent you, I, you know, I, I could be wrong about something, but there's a lot of points in there that I know I'm right on. You know, I had two young kids, and this wasn't what I bargained for. I was standing over here during a site walk, <coughs> prior to just be, this used to be a lawn in the Roberts house, this was just a lawn that was about 108.5 was the depression. Now I say it's at 105, but I think it's a lot deeper. Yeah, I think you're more like 103 here, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
It's either the ground is dug too deep, the concrete outlet, basin, whatever the structure is, is too high, or it's a combination of both. And so that, that was the water on April 29th, and it was like that for six months. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the water after it was pumped. Mm -hmm. You can see there's still there's about eight inches of water in the pool now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no way there's eight inches of water in there. It's just I don't know how you could have came up with that. It must have been a wrong a squared b squared thing. Um, but so you did that, and then but you got the as-built design from the owner's engineer. Okay. Yes. I don't understand how that could be an independent type of situation. It, it's it's their stamp, their responsibility. They're putting their professional seal on that. It's, 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 it, that is normally what we ask for, too. Is right. For I mean, the, your consultants don't typically go out to ask right. the surveys. But then you can stamp off their stamp? That's that's my letter that I stamped. I didn't so that's what I'm saying, but your, your data was taken from, I guess, you know, because two they, opposing they, parties. Because their as those plan, the elevations that they showed on that were pretty much right in line with what I figured a week ago. Definitely way too low. It needs to be measured. Some of the independent needs to measure. Not to mention, say I'm completely wrong. In the past two weeks, all this stuff I've been doing. Say I just, Sam, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's still at three foot three, and it's supposed to only be at two, two and a half. Fully saying that. And yes, um, Mr. Chairman, if you if you'd like, I'd be more than happy to go out with. With Mr. Johnston and take the measurements. I can shoot a couple of grades out there with him. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll just so just everybody gets. And what, but what we are looking at here oh, is yeah. an as built, a set of as built contours on this drawing here that they haven't been submitted yet, but this is what you've developed so far. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Our survey crew went out and took shots. But they haven't what? submitted it. Stamped it was a 90 degree yeah. piece of wood no, coming off. We have a project. Mm -hmm. I made it like a yardstick and then just put, placed it in the center and just let it touch. You can see when it's where it's wet. I know it's okay, but it's all I can do. No, 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 no. It works. And then that's the 15 inches depth from the top of the water to the bottom. That's uh, I also yeah. like. Um, yeah. To talk about real quick the, the detention, the infiltration basin on back. I was up there a couple weeks ago and it was like Lake Erie. You know, you didn't really know how deep it was, but it, it was massive. And uh, I thought the same idea was happening with the drain system on my property, next to my property. Went up there last Friday and all the water gone. I thought, man, like all the infiltration base things working. But I talked to John Nyland and Shan Morrissey, the butters on that side, and that water was also pumped up. Um, you know, my hope was when this whole situation happened that honestly my backyard might end up being dry. Wasn't that concerned about it. In all honesty, there was going to be a, a cul-de-sac out back. I have two young kids. Clap Road doesn't have a sidewalk. So I'm like, hey, we can go riding bikes up there. So I wasn't being an opponent. You could ask these guys. I was not an opponent in the least. Um, but some pump still goes off. Some pump runs continuously. Because bottom line is that water is not being caught in the infiltration basin, but well, whichever water it is is staying there, and the rest of it's overflowing. Completely boom again, rather than what it used to do, is actually run down through a little winding swath and actually cut through my yard and go to a farmer's drain. It used to go directly across Clap Road. Um, but now that drain, which I never was told this was going to happen, I was actually told two 24 inch drains were going to go across the street from my catch basin now, the one that my farmer's drain is connected to. I go, oh, that's great. That didn't happen. It, it, that's the blues of my farmer's drain going into the catch basin. Mm -hmm. The white's the concrete now that goes north instead of east, I think, uh, across the street. So it goes north. That runs into the that thing that runs into a manhole. The manhole discharges in the color. Again, this is this is cohesive draining system I'm talking about. This has it all together now. That's my catch basin. Mm -hmm. 
It used to go directly across over here, across the street. That pipe shut off. What is it? Okay. Here's my old pipe. They and connected. The, the good part about this pipe, and it's been there for, for 50 years, it was an easement with the town. It, it came, it wasn't, it wasn't great, it wasn't pitched perfect, it was only 12 inches, but, but it did do the job. Mm -hmm. Because when it came down, it, it was pitched, so when it went into the other side of Clap Road, it went into tributaries that were already graded down, so the water would just flow out. And I remember talking to the abutter across the street who owns that property, and he said, we need to continue that because that is the feeder system for the self swamp. Well now, if you go over there, now, across the street, it's like the Sahara Desert. There's zero water over there now. This was my old drain mm -hmm. that shut off. This is the new system. And the good part about this system is because it was created with this rip wrap pool design that goes up on the sides, it gets overwhelmed and the water goes over the pipes during a big rainstorm. So what I thought was gonna be this awesome, I'm getting two, actually the 20 inch pipe, they're 18 inch pipes too, not 24 inch, 24 inch says that design. But um, like I thought all this water was just gonna shoot across, bomb, done, and this is awesome. Now it's had the reverse effect where it's creating a, a backlog. Mm -hmm. But this is what's all affected with all my neighbors. Th this whole entire system as a whole, whether it's installed designed, I mean uh, installed incorrectly, designed incorrectly, a combination of both, I just, I just don't know. close-up picture of that, of that drain too. Oh, the other part too is that, so now the water comes out of the pocket wetland mm -hmm. and it goes into here. That's the top of the, I guess you call it a, um, a sump. I'm like, okay. I'm like, that, no, that doesn't shoot across the street. That, that heads, the sump's over here across from 214 clap. That's my driveway with the catch basin. And this is the second sump. This container of water is like 20 feet long. Mm -hmm. So it has to go to this pocket wetland, has to hang out forever. Then it finally trickles over, and it goes into this massive containment system. And I'm just like, what is the point? I, I thought the water was being filtered. Mm. Yes. Sorry. Mm. Uh, I just need something. OK. Appreciate your comments. Let's see if there are other comments, and then we'll turn it back over to the board here. Anybody else? Jim Morrissey, 238 Clap Road. Um, <clears throat> one of my concerns with, I don't know the technical names for each basin, but I'm talking about the largest one that's not on that, that's out in back of 232 Clap Road. Um, one of my concerns was how long the water would stay in that basin. Um, and I have photographic documentation, I've been sending it to Laura, um, that that pool basin um, maintained, I don't know how deep it was, but it was more than a foot or two of water for months. Um, the first time I sent pictures of it, we had not had rain in three weeks. Um, the next time I sent, it had been another two weeks. Those basins along Clap Road that Mike was just showing you, I've been sending pictures of those for months, just filled with water just water sitting in them week after week after week. So when I understood that the basin out behind 232 was supposed to empty in 72 hours, I became really concerned that it had been filled for well over a month. Um, it's empty right now. It was pumped out. They put hoses and, and pumps and pumped it out into the woods, um, which I have concerns about. Uh, but that's sort of separate. So I have a, and I did see one of the engineers from McKenzie out there and asked her, you know, what's happening? I'm concerned about the water just sitting here. And she said, we're working on it. Um, I'm very concerned as to why this system isn't working and why that hadn't been noted, why it hadn't been taken care of until we started complaining. Um, and. Also, how do we get to the bottom of this? How do we get to the bottom of what's wrong with this system? It's not, the water is, <coughs> the water that's supposed to be draining into South Swamp, which is where all our water comes from for this town, is not happening right now. It's not going back into the swamp. Um, and also, Mr. Brennan mentioned that our groundwater is not high right now. USGS 
groundwater site says it's actually slightly below normal. Right now, we are very below normal for rain for um, May and all the way back from March. The amount of snowfall that we had is not the equivalent of rainfall precipitation and groundwater <coughs> is not high right now. So why aren't these basins draining? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? That, that water was at the gateway at your infiltration area. So it's just constantly there, never moving. Similar to what I have going. If you look at the high water mark now, it's stopped right at that gateway. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, Jeff Delisi, I represent, I'm here with Greg Morris tonight. We represent Frank Snow, who is a trustee of the trust that owns the property on the opposite side of Flat Road. Um, our issue is a little different. Um, Essentially, these basins are designed to drain uh, through culvert underneath Black Road. Um, and our issue is that uh, the sediment traps on the opposite side of Black Road and portions of the pipes, the culvert pipes, are actually located on uh, Mr. Snow's property. Um, I brought the concern to Laura uh, today. We talked about it. And um, what she's told me is that apparently during the permitting process, the uh, applicant was told that he needed to get the proper consents and easements in order to do that. Because I guess the, the, uh, the, the applicant's plans actually also showed it being uh, par partially located on the property. Uh, so you have now a system that is uh, drained, that, that is supposed to drain on private property without right. The consents and the easements have not been obtained. And um, we've asked, uh, we've asked the, the, uh, the developer to remove these structures um, and we're still waiting for that to happen. Uh, and certainly we've also asked that they not be utilized in the interim until we're able to resolve, resolve this. Uh, so our concern is that there's going to potentially be a bit of a flooding issue on uh, Mr. Snow's property. Um, and uh, it also appears as if the sediment trap on the easterly side of, Clap, of, of our side of Clap Road on our property is, uh, is larger than what was what it was designed uh, to be, and um, apparently I'm being told that the sediment trap on the westerly side, um, on our side of the property, the westerly trap uh, is partially um, removed such that the water is spilling in a direction it wasn't designed to be spilling in. But all of that is superseded by the fact that these are not uh, located within the town way. It was our understanding that uh, that they apparently were to be located within the town way. Uh, but I have uh, Greg here, who did a survey, I, ha I have it with me if the board is interested, which cl clearly shows these structures on our property. And we, we, we think that this is a situation where the, uh, the permit ought to be modified to um, and re-engineered, frankly, so that our property is not being utilized. Okay. Do you say anything about that? Mm, go ahead. You've, um, you've been involved in this for a little bit, so. Uh, I did have a conversation with Jeff today, and actually before he came in today, um, I guess we had a little bit of email back and forth that um, Jeff was going to bring this up at the meeting. So I did look back at the minutes, and in September of 2013, it was indicated that it appeared that those sediment basins were on someone's property and going through the entire process I don't think there was ever any any idea that they were in the road layout I think they were thought to be on someone's property the whole time the owner chose not to come to the meetings he wanted to keep a you know good distance because he is chair of the Conservation Commission didn't want to influence the process and so on so it was 
a little bit mysterious what the agreement was, whether there was something, you know, a handshake or something on an envelope or what it was, but I'm quite sure that the idea of getting an easement was brought up and, you know, that, I, I don't want to say that it fell through the cracks because um, I don't think that was really the way, the way it went down. Um, I think that, that there was, there appeared to be some kind of agreement that either was going to take place or it had taken place. Um, but I, I don't think there was ever any confusion that, that, that those basins were in the road layout. I think they were always considered to be on, on Mr. Stone's property from the beginning. Um, but having said that, there seems to be a dispute now. Um, my thought is that the dispute should play out and, you know, if they reach some kind of agreement, that's great. If they, if they can't and those basins have to be taken out of there, then there's going to have to be, you know, a modification of the plan. But I think we don't know that yet. So, um, and it's, I think, beyond the planning board's control to some extent because it involves these two property owners kind of trying to negotiate with each other, hopefully, um, or, or not. Weren't the converts put in a, by the town? Originally, well, the culverts were put in by the town, and there was, I think, just direct, they were just directly discharging on the other side of the road. Um, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, and I thought right. the idea was that this was going to clean up the the outflow so that the sediment would be trapped and it wouldn't be going it wouldn't be going into the south swamp and i thought everybody just kind of agreed that was a good thing and it was going to be better for everyone okay thank you for your comments anybody else I, I don't know if anybody if it has any follow-up on that. I mean, I don't want to just kind of leave that if there's... No, I, you I know, didn't either. I, I just want to okay, make sure I got sorry. a public comment, and then we're going to come back. Okay, I, yeah, I just wanted to, um, to you know, ask through the board if those questions can be answered about why the big basin up back hasn't been draining. And then the other question I have is what kind of protection do we have if this drainage system doesn't work properly once the developer has sold his lots. Well, I, you know, I think our objective is to get the drainage system working properly, and that's that's what was uh, presumed to have been designed in the stormwater system, <coughs> and uh, that's what we need to make sure is happening. Um, and it's complicated by the fact that um, we appear to have a dispute that that's affecting some of the drainage um, that could be could require complete re-engineering of this thing too. So um, I guess that's what I I would like to do is just go back to the to the developer here and, and sort of get your input on the on the easement uh, issue first. Is that is that under discussion? Is there going to be a resolution? Are you attempting to get a resolution? <coughs> All right, we, if we want to start with the, the culverts, um, according to the agreement that we had with conservation in 2013 and the DPW, there was a concern with the flooding on Clapp Road. And as a condition with conservation, as well as with the planning board, we were required to replace the culverts. There were two metal culverts that went from our property across the county layout and discharged onto the snow property or onto the county layout. <clears throat> we replaced the, the culverts crossing the road, but the drainage design, which was reviewed by the peer engineer, does not add any additional flow or velocity to the discharge point where it exits onto the snow property. The second item is the westerly culvert, we believe there's already an easement to the town of Situate. And that's where the, the pipe discharges onto the, uh, on the outlet from the culvert, discharges on the westerly side onto an easement that was granted to the town of Situate. Now if there's some dispute to that, I'll let the attorneys um, answer that question, but there is a plan that's filed at the registry that shows the easement on that side. The easterly culvert, um, we believe that the pipe is in the same location as the existing pipe. 
that was put in by the town many years ago. We do understand that the riprap apron was put in by my contractor larger than it should have been. It should have been at least five feet less in size. But in discussions with Mr. Snow, he had asked that we do not trespass on his property to either remedy the problem or remove the riprap altogether to bring it back towards the edge of the road layout until some type of resolution with this has been done. So at this point, um, Attorney DeLisi has sent correspondence to my attorney and they're going back and forth. And I don't know where the resolution is going to go with that, but I'm prepared to at least bring whatever has been constructed that may be construed on his property back to the edge of the roadway, but there's some discrepancy as to where the edge of the roadway is. But in no means did we put those pipes in to enhance the flow from our property. We were required to do that by the town, and that's what we did to replace it, <clears throat> as well as the wet basin. That was one of the requirements of this design, and we followed what the town had requested us to do. As, as far as the, the property, the Johnson property, his, he has a pipe that you can see on the left side of this plan, the westerly side that's draining his backyard and probably runoff that runs further north. I think at some point in time, the yard was filled, it blocked some of the water, so a pipe was put in to drain the yard. And that pipe went to a catch basin. Um, when the system was redesigned, including the culverts going across the street, the proper way to do that was to have a catch basin replaced. The catch basin goes into the drain and then from the drain manhole it runs from the culvert across the street. So his drainage does not go into that wet basin. It goes into, it dumps into a drain manhole that runs across the street into the South Swamp. How many gallons is that manhole? Um, I, I, don't have the, I don't have the size of that manhole. <clears throat> As far as the, the elevation of the water that's standing in there, there's reports that the board has on record from Amory engineers when they were out last year during the course of construction. They've, they were out there at least on a weekly basis as well as representatives from McKenzie to take pictures and observe the construction that was out there. Um, there are photos of that basin at the 106 elevation being dry last summer. As a matter of fact, the whole summer was dry. I wish we had put the plantings in at that point instead of October once the deluge came. Um, the next point that has been brought up to me is that there's concern with the basin that was built. We call it basin number two that was built on the, I guess, the northwesterly side of the site. Um, when Laura had brought that to, to our attention that the water had been slow to, to dissipate from the pond, I went up and measured it. There's a, there was approximately 18 inches of water from the discharge to the bottom of the pond. It's, it's, so I want to clarify at least the amount. Um, we recognize that that pond is supposed to be um, recharging the water area and at this point we went through all our records as far as the, the construction, the material that went in, the pictures, the inspections, and we don't have an answer, but what we had explained to Laura in an email from the engineer is we were in the invest investigation stage, which included we just put in three site wells to measure the water table around the basin as well in another location in the site. And we've dug a few test holes in the, in the uh, flat part of the basin to determine you know, what is exactly is in there. Um, our consultant has told us, the hydrologist has told us to wait until that basin is very dry and at that point we're going to do some additional test holes so we can see if there's anything that's, that's changed in the strata that may prevent that water from um, infiltrating into the groundwater table. There's some infiltration taking place now? Very slow. It's slower than what was it, it was designed for. What elevation is the bottom of that basin at? Approximately. 120. I believe is the bottom of the basin. Yeah. And where would and the high, be? And high water, high high groundwater in that general location. It's we have um, a test pit that's uphill of that that's at 120, but it's a fair amount uphill. We have a couple within the basin that I, I believe are in the 118 range, and we have one. Um, it's where we installed one of the monitoring wells on the east end, I guess it is, of the, of the basin um, that indicates <coughs> it's at about 116 and a half, somewhere in that vicinity. So when we design the basin, we attempt to keep it 
two feet above right. the ground, the, the seasonal high groundwater in um, per stormwater management regulations. So generally 118-ish in that in that area. So the basin's designed to to perk, so to speak, um, and be above seasonal high groundwater. It's not groundwater that's in the basin right no, now. No, no. That was a concern at first, but I, I think we have put that to bed more or less with the, the monitoring wells and about a week ago, I was in correspondence with Laura, and what we what the plan of, of action was that Deb Keller, the design engineer, had had discussed was to put a pump, a two-inch pump, which wasn't a large pump, into the basin, and we pumped that out. It, it took approximately one day, and I told her over the course of the weekend, and we just wouldn't let it run to make sure, but that there wouldn't be any any residual issues. Uh, but it was a small enough pump. Overnight, it pumped itself out. The water has not returned. So that indicates to us that the, the potential is it's not f a result of the groundwater table, but that from our other consultant that was, that was used on the design of this, because one of the concerns we had was water going underneath the berm because of, of the Nylons property. We didn't want to affect them as well. Um, he suggested right now that the course of action is to wait until everything dries out, and then we can do a soil sample and possibly another perk test within the basin mm -hmm. to find out if there's maybe a permeability issue or something else. So we're, we're working on that. Okay. Uh, I think Jeff's got a question. Yes. Just quickly, um, I'm not a scientist, but prior to this, these, these uh, sediment traps and this cul these culverts being upgraded and so forth, it was only, uh, for instance, on the easterly side, the easterly basin on our side of the property, there was only one uh, pipe underneath the road, to my to my knowledge. Now there's three. So, I mean, the other, the other issue, you know, that just practically that kind of comes to my mind is you have a situation where the pre-existing condition before all of this was put in was basically water running off of this property and being caught in certain areas of the flat road. Now you have a situation where the property has been pretty much fairly well excavated Regraded, water collected, concentrated in certain areas, and then spilling through these culverts. There's more water going through these culverts now than there was there was then. There has to be. There's a potential. But but just beyond all that, the issue of the easement is someone's got to show me an easement because an easement on a plan at a registry is a little different than an easement being granted uh, from one party to another that's pertinent to the property. So I don't see any easements, and the bottom line is we don't have any consents. And, and, and we, have, uh, we have a great issue with that. One last thing. Yes. Are you responding to that? I just wanted to address the, the multiple pipes. Um, they're not designed to carry more water. They're designed to contain the water within the site and not, and, and so that it does not <coughs> overtop the road. I think that was one of our mandates um, early on, if I'm not mistaken, because there were issues with flooding over the road. So the, those storm, the multiple pipes are there to um, direct the 100 year storm up to and including the 100 year storm and maintain the flow under the road instead of over the road. So, but the, we developed a stormwater report that addresses all that, uh, how we contain each year storm, the two, 10, 25, and 100 year storms, um, and maintain it to pre-development rates, which is our mandate from the EP. Um, so that's all contained within the stormwater report, which again was reviewed, um, peer reviewed. And, and everything's been installed per that design. Yes, we've That's done. been confirmed. We've, we've done as-built, um, preliminary as-built. I mean, we have the data. We haven't committed it to a formal plan, but yes. Okay. One? Well, yes, we haven't heard from you. Yeah, hi. John Nyland, 232 Flat Road. 
Uh, the other detention pond that we've been speaking about is directly behind my house. And, you know, I can just reinforce what uh, Shan said, that that pond has basically been filled all winter. And, you know, in no event did I see it draining in a 72-hour period. And the only time it drained was when they, they pumped it out. And I can tell you that, you know, my sump has been running, you know, continuously and was running even, you know, up until last week, which was about a week after they pumped it out. So, you know, from my perspective, I did see a direct correlation to the water level contained in that pond, the fact that it wasn't draining, and the impact it's having on uh, sump, my sump operation. So I, I would like to know, I mean, I heard uh, Mr. I. Tosk was concerned over not impacting my property. I appreciate that, uh, you know, but I would like to know, you know, what the resolution is going to get to function properly. Thank you. Last comment? Yeah, um, yep, last comment. Um, also understand that this is prior to any of the eight houses going in, which are going to be displacing a ton of soil with a bunch of concrete foundations. And just as a whole, we had a 72 hour drain and infiltration basin that doesn't move, that's supposedly two feet above groundwater. We have my situation, which I explained pretty, uh, I thought I explained uh, pretty deeply. And uh, middle of that pond is deeper than anybody has said so far, um, way deeper. Uh, also, now I'm finding out we have lawsuits, so that's three. Um, and then I'm hearing stuff about, you know, let's just like go in a holding pattern and like let's, let's it play out, let it play out. That scares the hell out of me. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of the talk tonight's been focused with the lawyers, the builders, the engineers, and you know, we're the little guys that are sort of getting left out in the cold here. I didn't have the builder or the lawyer rebut one thing I said, so they're not even on record saying anything. Um, I just feel like we're getting steamrolled on this. Well, I appreciate your comment, but I want to let you hold your, your thoughts until we finished our deliberations here, too. Um, and um, at this point, I, I actually want to turn it back to the board and uh, kind of get your thoughts, at least at this point. I, I have a, a laundry list of things that I think need to be addressed here, um, which I'm happy to start with unless you've got something else. The, the way, the way I, I've as I've heard everything, here's sort of my list, and we can use that as maybe a starting point. Okay. Um, regarding the, this wet basin, um, there are a couple things that it, that sounds like it needs to be done. One is just to verify the dimensions, and you say you have, but um, it's there seems to be a dispute. So let's make sure we get the dimensional uh, design of the basins verified. And, and the second part of that is really planting the vegetation that needs to go into this thing. Uh, those seem to be the two sort of action items on this. Okay. Do um, we want to address? Yeah. I think, Pat, uh, you indicated that you'd, you'd go out with with the, your butter to, to take a look at the measurements? Well, yeah. I, th I think that would, that would go there. That would at least yeah. clarify and you'd understand that how he measured them as opposed to how you measure them. Right. But let's make sure that you have if you don't, Pat, that you have whatever their latest as-builts are. They sent that to me last night. Oh, you've got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So use that to. to yeah, the, the town doesn't have a copy of those as-builts, so if they could provide one to the town, so that. So then the, I guess the McKenzie, you, McKenzie wanted to have somebody there that would make make sense to have them there. If you'd like us to be there, that's fine. Well, you don't have to tell me now or tell us now, but. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it may make sense to have all three of you look at the puddle at the same time. Uh, during that visit, also, you tried to explain the water flow and connecting pipes and structures and things like that. I honestly couldn't f follow it, but I understand that there's a concern. So I suggest perhaps the engineers could on site explain to you what, how those structures and pipes and culverts and all that are connected, which way the water flows and, and that sort of thing. Right. Right on, right there on site. Yeah, that was, 
that was sort of my item three. Oh, is, thank is you. It's the that. same thing. Yeah. But I, no, that's, that's well said. I think that's what we want to make sure, that there's no difference between sort of what was intended and what's there, okay? And at least you understand, you know, how the system's supposed to be functioning anyway. But just going back to the verification of dimensions, the, the second piece of that, once we have that, is really making sure this vegetation gets planted. Right, and, and is that on your near-term plan for the it, wet basin? As soon as we're able to get into the basin, it is. So when do you think that will be? As soon as the water table is low enough for us to get into it. I, I can't, I, if I could do it tomorrow, the plantings are there, I'd love to do it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's dictated by the How water. How water need to be? Are you thinking it's going to be like a late summer kind of thing, or is it? I'm hoping that it would be sometime in midsummer that the you know by July or, or earlier that it's going to be low enough for us to be able to do that. It needs to be below 106 or around 106. It would be around 106. And it's what now 107.5. Um, yeah. There's about if you t if if they go out tomorrow and take measurements, my guess is that in that 106 there's about eight eight tenths, six tenths of, of water in there, eight tenths of water. Okay. Right. So it's about 107. It's well underneath the um, the outlet. Okay. That review would that review would make a determination as to whether the plant that you have should be changed. The excuse me. Plantings. In other words, you'd look at whether the, the possibility because of the wetness and that it may be possible that you'd have to change the plantings? No. The plantings that, that were supposed to go into that basin are designed to to thrive in that environment. <clears throat> the issue is is that at their young plants and the leaves have to be well above the water, the roots can remain in the water, but the leaves have to re remain in the sunshine in order for it to, to thrive. Okay. And so I want to make sure that we have the water low enough that the plugs that we put in, which are about this high, will end up, for the most part, surviving. And the ones that don't, we can re whatever dies off, we can re replace. <clears throat> okay. So um, what we need you to do is just we need to be updated as to when that's going to happen, so we make sure that it, it, we don't miss a planting season here because it's going to be a real mess if we do, right? Um, as Mr. Vogel pointed out, I think the third thing was that the, sort of the whole design of the catch basin um, next to this gentleman's house and making sure that, that it was installed, first of all, as designed and then making sure it's performing as it was intended to be uh, performing as well. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good place to interrupt. Okay. Um, Karen had mentioned that um, what she thinks ought to happen is that is that you get the um, Mackenzie's wetland scientist or your person who um, determined what plants need to go in, who you know who is you know connected with your firm to verify that that they can go in with the groundwater at a certain level and that you know there's a certain you know verify what the period is that the ground needs to remain dry for them to be established get the right size of plants um, you know and just confirm that all of that's being done properly so that everything can grow I mean it seems to be kind of excuse me but that, <clears throat> that was one of the conditions with conservation in, in the okay. wetlands Great. Who's Brad? Holmes. Brad Holmes from ECR Environmental. He's been supervising the plantings, and also he's being consulted as they go in. So he would be contacted when the plantings go in. That's. I think that's great. Um, that's good. And he's he's also issued the re progress reports to the Conservation Commission as we've been planting. So we will continue to follow with him, and we will copy the planning board with his report. That sounds great. Okay. That sounds good. Maybe that's a little reassurance to people. Um, so the, the question is, can we address this catch basin thing at the same time we're addressing the uh, the dimensions while we're out on site? Can you the, the route of the yeah the route of the catch yeah, basin on that. What I'll do to um, help that out. This is just a progress plan. We don't have a final product for our NAS build, but if I expand that view, um, it'll show that 
circuitry of uh, drainage there. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. So great. We can trace well, you're on the ground site where it is. Also, physically look. Yeah, at just it. kind of walk sure. walk through it. Sure. I think that would okay. be very helpful. Um, the fourth item I had on my list was um, really the retention basin in the in the back and then northwest at the northeast northwest whatever corner that is um, the one that's not draining we obviously need to understand what's happening there and if you're in the middle of the investigation I guess we would like to get an update on on what you've found and what the solution is going to be there um, and when do you think all of that will kind of come to pass <clears throat> the discussion that we had with the consultant today was they they need that the soil conditions in that basin to be bone dry in order to do the soil samples and I I'm what would you estimate that time frame to be I, I would hope within a couple of weeks that it would be dry enough that we could um, do it <coughs> all we need to do is a hand excavation out in the, the more towards the middle of the basin so we can observe the, the various layers and assess um, what may be going on but um, it does need to dry out for us to do that or we won't get a clear picture of it so the end of June or early July sometime you could come back here and really give us all an update on to on what what you found and what the solution is going to be obviously you can stay in touch with Laura in, in the interim but mm -hmm. I think we ought to shoot for you know a month or so from now to get that feedback But that elevation since you pumped it hasn't changed. No. No. So it's so not draining. It's not draining. But it goes back to why the pump should be, some pump should be running if that's the water, the water, water table's that high. Yeah, we don't, we don't think, it's, uh, we, I don't think it's a water table issue because once it was pumped out, which was two weeks ago, two weekends ago, the water, the water is, is even, it's even drier. It's, rec yeah, it's receding. receding in the there's a uh, low flow trench made of stones you may have seen it um, throughout and we can see the water as of the other day we could see water at the very bottom of those stones but it's clearly not coming back in at this point okay well we obviously need to get to the bottom of that one too and, and I think the, the last item on my list and I'll open up the rest of the board here too was um, we're going to need to leave it to you and and the owner of the property to resolve the the easement issues and to the extent that it doesn't get resolved then we're going to have to address it with a, a, a amended plan so I guess I would leave it to you to have those discussions and report back to us as to what if there's any resolution that's going to happen here because absent that um, it sounds like there's going to have to be some modifications to the drainage design. Mm -hmm. Those were the items on my list. It's my list too. Anybody else? No, very well done. So, in terms of this last item, um, when do you think it can? Re can you report back to us at the next meeting? If not before, I mean, obviously you can talk with Laura at any time, but um, in terms of the board. Um, at this point, if I have any, any progress to report, I can, I can be in contact by email with Laura. Um, this has been an issue that I've been in, in, um, in contact with Mr. Snow since uh, probably last August. And we haven't seemed to get any closer to a resolution yet. So I don't have an answer for you. Obviously, it would be in everyone's best interest to see if we can get a resolution and move move forward because it's not benefiting anybody. So, with whatever correspondence I do have, I would be happy to share it with the board. And I guess we would need to know if there was a a change in the performance of the system as a result of conforming with a do not drain. You know letter as it's been suggested here or something yeah i don't think we're going to get we're not going to go in that direction so okay. it's, it's going to it's going to take a long time before we get to that right. point just <clears throat> we would would like to get an update if that sure. does happen 
Do you want to schedule him back before us at the end of June? That's what I'd like to do. I think we ought to have have a check-in back in a month, whatever right. our second meeting is in June. Okay, it's, it's, uh, June 25th, and you've got one item. Um, uh, site plan review 13 Ford Place. It's a um, small um, contractor's yard, it appears to be, and um, that's, yeah. that's going to be you know fairly involved, uh, maybe an hour. So say 8:30. Um, on the 25th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Does that work for you, gentlemen? 8:30 yes. on the 25th. Yes. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, just real quick, in terms of coordinating with what they were going to meet, you got an email pad or like? Sure. Okay. And second, you go through. Yeah, you you can. I'll, I'll be in touch with you. <laughs> just just so we're clear, they, just the question I might have when we come back to it is when that pond is running optimally in the way it should be it is the bottom of the pond supposed to be fairly stiff or is it supposed to be soft where you can go in like quicksand i'm going to guess in those micro pools it's always going to be soft except those will never it's always wet right mm -hmm. yeah what is it that silt that's on the bottom it's, it's loam loam was put in there and it's not it loam turns into just mud. so it's not like the stuff filtering down first okay Anything else? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody Thank you. attendance tonight. Thank you. We need to vote, but you kind of reached consensus on that list. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah. Oh, do we need yes. to vote on that? Well, I don't know. Um, I think we can take a vote if you like. Yeah, yeah, move to um, in your discussion move forward with all the items on Steve's. I, I didn't think it was a good thing. I think it's okay. always good to have votes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So second. Who's made the motion? I move to continue the discussion until June 25th. Uh, yeah, yeah. Second. Um, in accordance and address, with our list. Yeah. And in address accordance. the laundry list. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. How much longer do you think you have to rub? Keep me straight here. Oh. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. 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 Oh. Was that your foot? Let me get you back this. Oh, oh. Your oh. vice chairman. Oh. No, but. Oh. And, um, okay. We're down to um, liaison reports. Done. I attended. I attended the ZDA oh, meeting last week. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, she just ran away. Give her a second. We ought to put all of these. Yeah, I was going to say this was documentation this back. Email. Oh yeah, that was his. I, can take I think it down he gave, here with his book. I think he gave copies of that to a lot of people today. Oh, we'll give it all to Laura. And she Did can he leave without it. his book? I, didn't, I think so. I didn't think he would oh. do that. Did he give us that? No. No, that was something else. He gave it to Pat. So Laura, the, um, the Laura, gentleman, can, can you uh, grab that? Mike gentleman who was the? Oh, you, you want it back? He left all of well, his stuff oh, here. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. See if you can run him down. Making friends? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So we need three signatures on these, Bob. Would, yeah. would you like to Situation do the third? Or? Okay, sign. Why not? Looks good. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> it's only temporary. It's still too big. <laughs> <laughs> it's temporarily you too can't big. Miss it. It's temporarily <laughs> too big. <laughs> See what Laura has to say. Yeah, let's just give her a minute. Yeah. I think we've covered everything in the same way. Not to be a stickler, but I was reading the specs for the, the, the sanitary pumping system. Uh -huh. and, and on on the what I was reading is they had the owner as as um, you know, the town of Situate, this and that, and then they had the second owner as the town clerk, but they had the Situate Rhode Island address. Oh, nice. So I actually called the engineer and I said, look, it's we were first, so, you know. <laughs> she's like, could you send me something? So I had to. Uh, oh, my God. So. That's bizarre. Yeah. Oh, look. Okay. All 
So the only thing we have left, Laura, is the town planner report. Mm -hmm. What do you have to report? Um, well, the planner report is that the town planner has approved the report. I see we got a picture of the town library. Okay, you, you got that. Um, so any feedback on that sign, please let me know. I have a color one. Oh, I, can, I just um, noticed it. Yeah, that's everything. That and is this I guess already done? No, that's... Oh, that's a superimposed. Markup. That's superimposed, yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing was just to let you know about this application that we got for this uh, 13 Ford Place, which is um, kind of our first major application in a little while. And it's it's a, basically a contractor's yard, but it is in Greenbush Village. Uh, so... Um, is it right what next what are to... They, I'm trying to yeah, 50 yeah, what are they applying to do? They're applying to construct um, a contractor's yard with a half dozen 1,200 square foot units. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. It's at one of the houses. Uh, let's see, this is the house. The idea is to maintain the house, um, but from the plans, it's not quite clear how that's going to be um, achieved because the one of the units is kind of superimposed over the front of the house. Oh, cool. So is anyway, this similar to the, what happens. the property that's on the other side when they built the train tracks? I know DJ Richards, I think he has a... It would be something like that, yeah, but it would be over um, uh, the, by what he wants the post office. You know where the post so office is? Yes. Yes. It's right. Sure. It's like two houses like away from the post yeah, office. But on that side, she was on the same side. Square foot units. I thought okay. she, they were talking about houses. Oh, oh no, no, it's like a. It's, it's going to be storage. Pull your stuff, your materials, wheelbarrows, so maybe, materials yeah, storage. Maybe park the truck. So, on the way out to Fitzmill, on the right, there's something pretty similar to this, right? There now. Yeah, the storage. Uh, well, there's there's storage units there. Well, right. Yeah, but there's not a exactly. yard or like a well, There's a small yard one. Too. Yeah. John Howe. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, since the zoning was changed in 2010, it says the contractor's yard is something that you can do in the commercial zone. Uh -huh. It doesn't say anything about doing it. Well, it says no, you can't do it in the business zone. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is this so business or residential? Business. Business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. So, you know, I mean, I'd be curious how that plays out and so how why that's would interpreted. Be for us, as opposed to the ZBA, um, they applied to the planning board. That doesn't mean that this is the place where it should wind up. Okay. So we can maybe have some conversations about that. Okay. Um, and that's the first thing that occurs to me. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I think that's one of the main things. It's also going to be within 150 feet, I'm betting, of right. Tan Brook. Right. Uh, it's water resource. Uh, there's a part of it that's in the zone A, and there's a good part that's in the water resource protection mm -hmm. district. Yeah, right. Um, and speaking of zone A's, I went to the CBA hearing on Five Williamsburg <laughs> Lane, which <laughs> of course Bob was at, right. yeah. and it it was withdrawn, but there was quite a bit of opposition to it um, from the water resources committee. Um, Various mm -hmm. not, not opposition to the withdrawal. There was opposition. No opposition, opposition to, to the application. To the um, this is on the left because at the end of, of the, the tributary. Yeah, um, that's what I thought. From that it's the same tributary that, that, that yeah. you guys so spent like hours of your lives what on. What was proposed there? Um, a single family. Home. A single family oh, okay, house, so but here then. didn't come here. No, no, but within it was the, the other a. side of the brook that we um, We're the within the 150 foot the tributary, which created the white, white ash, white ash, farm white ash farm. Yeah. It's the tribu that, that tributary, yes. that ah. tributary, right? Okay, exactly. Yep. Interesting. And I think the chairman of the zoning board would like to hear more from the planning board on the important applications. You know, not every single one, but just the ones that seem like they're critical, which she felt this one was. So, um, the, the so one anyway. on Fort Place you talked about. Or, or you're talking about Williamsburg. Uh, the Williamsburg, Williamsburg one. Williamsburg, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that they? that all worked out. I think um, well the way she wanted it to go. Yeah, I but, think we were uh, all in favor of that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. So. so I second Bob's motion. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor. Aye. 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 I can't vote against myself. <laughs> <laughs>